All right, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm your host, Charlie McGrath. It is the second day of January 2013, our first uh, live program of the year. And I want to uh, uh, invite all the people listening who are not in the chat room to go to wideawakenews.com, click on the Wide Awake Radio button, uh, and you can uh, join in the chat there. If you want to watch uh, uh, me do this live, you can watch the, the feed from Justin TV. That's avail- that link is available in the chat room as well. And uh, once again, welcome to all the Rinse Radio listeners as well as the Oracle Broadcasting uh, Radio listeners as we are simulcasting on both of those networks. <clears throat> we're going to bring on Christina Consalo here in just a minute, the rad chick. Uh, we haven't had her on for about a month, and we're going to get an update. And she sent me a list of topics that she's going to cover tonight. And uh, it, there's plenty, plenty of things going on besides the charade of the, the fiscal cliff. Um, and for those of you who are uh, waiting for a video on that, I'm going to try to put one out tonight on what the fiscal cliff deal entailed, uh, because it is it is absolutely 100 percent a screw job on the people of this country. Uh, you know, the, with all this garbage we're hearing about, our taxes aren't going up if we're four hundred thousand dollars or less in income. Uh, guess what? You, you know, th- this is this was ran through, governed by crisis legislation. That when it's when it's uh, filtering out here, as it will continue to filter out over the next few days, we will find out the, the that the American people have been uh, uh, once again led down a path uh, of uh, a primrose path to a goal that's going to benefit them is what we're told and in reality we're not here's here's a couple simple facts that uh, that you know we're not going to hear from the folks out of DC be it red or blue team 77% of households 77% of households in this country now are going to pay on average $1600 more a year in taxes what happened to all the 400,000 or less or we're going to go after uh, the 0.1 percenters we're going to go after corporations. We're not going to have the people of this country shoulder this burden. Uh, one more, one more uh, promise that was uh, laid out there by a uh, uh, a spokesman for special interest, and the truth works out that we will get to pay for it. It breaks down to $140 a month uh, per household. It, it the the list of things that are are unbelievable in this bill are. I mean, I, I could talk about them for the next hour. But like I said, I'll try to get a, a commentary video out on it uh, within the next. Uh, well, I'm going to try to do it tonight after the program. Another fact: one dollar. You know, th- this is the big thing. This is the big. You know, I, I'm going to save this. I, I'm going to save all of this because if I go off on a rant here, I, I won't have time to get all the information Christina wants to uh, uh, bring onto the program. So, if you're not in the chat, whitewicknews.com, get in the chat room. Uh, questions you might have for Christina or myself, uh, I'll be monitoring uh, the chat room. I'm sure Christina is as well. Uh, coming up in hour number two, we have uh, uh, Dinah uh, Snyder coming back on. Uh, she had that uh, the program where she was treating uh, war veterans for various uh, conditions. And when she was on here last time, we only got about halfway through. Uh, it was very fascinating. We're going we're to continue that uh, interview in the second hour. But before we go any further, let's bring Christina on. Christina Consolo, welcome back to the program. How is the rad chick? Thanks, Charlie. I'm good and happy new year. Happy New Year to you too. How are you? Um, okay. It's been a rough couple of weeks. I've been sick and I had to Everybody's do, uh... sick. Everybody is I sick. I know. I know. What wow, I'm seeing your new picture. Is that you? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you didn't know I didn't know you're a model. I've only seen the, the space suit with well, the it's bubble. Bef- before I got sick. <laughs> Holy crikey. All right. Well, here's the deal. If you're not watching on Justin TV, you're probably want to go over there and check it out because Christina's got a very lovely portrait up there uh, for her image. And, uh, the avatar that we had before was uh, the uh, the space suit with the bubble helmet. And now this is an actual picture of her. Unfortunately, it's in one a one inch by one inch uh, uh, on my screen right now. So, you know, but from what I see, you're an amazingly good looking individual. Well, thank you. I'm sorry you've been sick. What's wrong with you? Um, I've had a whole bunch of things that have just kind of all fallen apart at once. And it's really frustrating because I'm doing everything as right as I possibly can in terms of like eating and, you know, avoiding the things that I know are are bad for us in terms of radiation and, you know, rain and so forth. Um, I, I eat really healthy and I take supplements and just in the last 
three months, I've had just a really severe case of pneumonia. And then um, I had a couple of teeth that I had like abscesses with. And then I had an abscess on my leg. And it's just like, wow, I mean, why is this happening? This isn't like really, this is like old people stuff yeah. that's happening. And, you know, I'm, I'm this is, really a this healthy is, person. So it's kind of, um, it's very frustrating. Th- this is, you know, I, I had this conversation today with one of my best friends. Uh, his wife has a, a lot of the same uh, things that I have going on respiratory wise. And, and I said, I, I just, his name's Anthony. I'm like, Anthony, I, I don't understand what the hell is going on. Everybody I know, everybody I know is either sick or they have a loved one that's sick. And it's, it's completely uncharacteristic for the people uh, that, that are having these ail, you know, these different kinds of ailments. A lot of them are these pneumonia type uh, respiratory, uh, you know, a lot of uh, liquid in the lungs type of thing. And, uh, you know, you talk about lifestyles. I, I mean, I, I, the conversation I had with him, because he, he was a collegiate uh, wrestler, a really, uh, really in shape individual. And him and I have, have been running partners uh, for years. And I said, you know, we, we spend all these all this time exercising and trying to eat right and, uh, you know, going out and doing these, you know, 15, 20 mile runs. And I said, look, we, you know, we're both in our uh, in our early 40s. And I, I said, I, I can't believe it. I mean, I'm at the point now where a flight of stairs is I'm, it's like I'm looking at uh, Mount Everest, you know, right. and, and it, it, it's just it's unbelievable what's going on. And his wife is in the same boat as I am. She's she was always been fit, always exercised, but out of the blue and out of the blue, I don't mean in, in the last week or so, but uh, in the last year or so, let's say, or maybe last year and a half, you know, the, the, I just have a lot of friends that they went from extremely healthy to extremely uh, not healthy. And what's even more troubling is that when you start down the path of either uh, conventional medicine or uh, alternative medicine or homeopathic remedies, Nothing seems, you know, things seem to work for a minute and then they, they go by the wayside and, and then you're right back to square one again. So I, I understand your frustration and thanks for letting me share. <laughs> the things that always worked for me in the past don't work anymore. Like I could just sleep for like 14 hours yeah, and I'd wake up and I'd feel so much better. And now like if I sleep that long, I wake up and I still feel really crappy and just, you know, no energy. And like you said, you know, stairs, like I look at, I have four flights of stairs to get up to my apartment and you know when I come home with a couple grocery bags I'm just like oh my gosh you know it's, it's depressing just, isn't it it's it is depressing. it is depressing it is depressing and I know there's there's probably um, many many reasons for it we certainly have seen an increase in a lot of weird viruses um, just today in Wales they were reporting a, a new hemorrhagic virus in fish um, you know, it's not just our country and it's not just our species either. Um, today, also, there was a report that came out on AP that they're noticing a 75% decrease in stellar seals in Alaska. And um, another report came out from, I believe it was the BBC, that Japan's birth rate has dropped um, lower than it's ever been since they started recording it in 1947. And I mean, those are just small examples. I mean, if you look at any of the uh, disaster maps or outbreak maps, hazmat type stuff, there's there's some weird outbreaks that are going on all over. And I know that could be from uh, radiation, um, whether or not it's all coming from from Fukushima or it could still be coming from you know Chernobyl because they have problems with the facility there and the sarcophagus that they put over the facility is crumbling and needs to be replaced. And now today. We learned that in a um, the Isfahan facility in Iran, they are evacuating a city of one and a half million people yeah. because they have extreme pollution. And there's a reactor, or not a reactor, a uranium, uranium uh, refinement facility near there where there were a couple people injured in November, a few workers, and they suspected that there's leaks coming out of that plant. And now that they're evacuating this huge city, I mean, it's got to be something fairly serious. Well, definitely, and, and we're coming up on a break here, but I want to I want to talk about a, a little bit more about what's going on in Iran and uh, 
and maybe I, I mean you know when I first saw that story the first thing I thought was you know the you know the computer viruses that uh, we've been uh, you know it's been alleged we've been uh, attacking them with and plus drone flights and all that kind of thing uh, trying to uh, disrupt their nuclear ambition we'll talk about that and more with Christina Consolo and more Wide Awake News Radio in just a few minutes guys hang tight all right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Christina Consalo, the rad chick. Uh, we we're talking about some uh, some headlines, some things going on that, that, that you're covering. First of all, where can we hear your program and, and see your information that you're putting out? Uh, Nuked Radio is on UCY TV on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What is it? UCY TV? UCY TV. Letter U C Y. Stop. <laughs> you see why TV and when Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays from one to 2 p.m. Eastern East? Standard Time. Uh, is that is that new? I didn't know you were. Is this because uh, you were broadcasting on another network last time you were on? I, I was on Orion and I left there in August. OK, well, to, you see um, join up at this new station. You see why TV is it video you're, or is it just audio? No, my producer has been trying to talk me into doing video since the start. She's like, you know, you could just get dressed and put a little makeup <laughs> on in the morning and go live. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> so you're, getting, you're doing it not dressed? Is that? <laughs> no, I do it in my pajamas. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, rough life, rough life. I don't, I am not getting out of bed to do this. I'm going to lay in bed and broadcast. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> All right, well, UCY TV, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Uh, to 2 p.m. East. And any, uh, what about your website? Fukushimafacts.com. And I have links there to my Twitter and to YouTube and to the radio show. Very cool. All right, 1.5 million people evacuated out of Iran. What is the consensus on what's going on there? <clears throat> Well, what they suspect is it's from this leak at the uranium enrichment facility. Um, you know, it's hard to tell exactly how many facilities there are. We know that they have a research reactor in Isfahan. Um, that was actually, um, I think, Israel might have shot a missile at that a few months ago. Then there's the one we always hear about, Bushehr, right. um, that the IAEA always wants to get in and take a look at, and they, they haven't been uh, forthcoming with allowing them to do that, and then they have a, a production of heavy water facility, another pilot facility for uranium enrichment. But if you look at a U.S. map, there's like 20 different um, weapons, uh, weapon refining areas, and you know Iran's map only has five. A U.S. map has 20, so I don't know how much of that is propaganda or not. You don't know really whose map is right. Right. I mean, there's just so much BS from everywhere. Well, and it's like you said during the break that at least, you know, at least Iran, whatever the situation is, at least they're uh, taking the precaution of evacuating people. And it seems like in the West, well, I, I guess Japan isn't in the West, but when uh, when we have some kind of event here, it's uh, we're going to dump, you know, as we did in the Gulf, we're going to dump all this Corexic on, on the problem and then, you know, have this propaganda, uh, nonstop propaganda machine convince people that everything's OK, or as is the case in Japan. You know, they're they're uh, trying to get people to move back into the affected area. Uh, I mean, certainly not taking the precaution of evacuating people as such as Iran seems to be. Yeah, I mean, in the U.S., anytime we've had any kind of accident at a nuke plant, it's it's usually weeks or months um, until people will find out what's been going on. You yeah. know, and that by that time, like they're showing symptoms of exposure and, you know, every everyone around them is sick. Or, um, you know, I mean, with the, the, the case now with Fukushima, you know, my, my big problem has always been from the beginning that they shut down all the testing of food and so forth. Um, after the USGS proved that fallout had landed everywhere across the United States, they stopped testing April 5th of 2011. And they never tested again. And the releases have been ongoing. And the same thing with food. Now, here and there, we're picking it up, you know, in dates and nuts and grapefruit and oranges, um, you know, in, in some of the West Coast produce. And then we have all the mutation pictures that, that people have sent me or have posted on Facebook. And, um, you know, we need the EPA to do its job and, and the FDA 
and all these agencies that we're paying to, to monitor for these types of substances, you know, they just said there isn't a problem and shut everything down. And that's just not acceptable. In fact, Turkey today said that they are going to retroactively um, measure every import from Japan since March of 2011 because they suspect uh, radiation contamination. Well, that's interesting. And that's interesting because the, the Washington blog uh, had a story on uh, that was posted originally on March 30th, uh, California slam with Fukushima radiation. And it was uh, levels that were 500 uh, percent above normal. Uh, iodine-131 that uh, uh, higher, wait a minute, 500% higher for uh, radioactive iodine-131, uh, higher than anyone else in the United States or Canada, and that's also data from March, so they must be looking, uh, you know, at the, it, it, uh, that same kind of data to go, you know, to go back and look at the, anything imported from Japan since March of last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the machines to test this stuff are really expensive. You know, they cost like fifteen thousand dollars to test food, and there's a there's a few people. There's actually a few, uh, you know, um, citizen journalists on YouTube that have these type of instruments, and they they've been doing food tests, and they're finding radiation in the food that they're testing. They're testing tea and milk and beef. Some of the people have paid, um, you know, thousands of dollars to send out send out uh, beef for testing, and they found plutonium landed on the beef while it was thawing in their kitchen. Good grief. In St. Louis. This was back last summer. So, I mean, we know it's there. We don't know how much of it is. $15,000 to test that? Yeah, yeah, to have a machine to, to test it properly. But the EPA has, you know, hundreds of those types of machines. And, um, you know, it's um, it's very unfortunate. So we're, we're kind of stuck in, in just having to assume the worst, which is what you do. When there's a question of nuclear fallout, you have to assume the worst because if it's true, the effects are going to be so detrimental to your health. And it's ex the last thing they ever do is uh, take the stance of uh, being prepared for the worst, it seems like. All right, we're going to be back with Christina more Wide Awake News Radio in just a few minutes, guys. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Christina Consolo, the rad chick. You can catch her program uh, every Tuesday and Thursday on UCY-TV, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. East, uh, UCYTV.com. I'm assuming that's it. Yep. UCYTV.com. Christina, um, we were talking during the break a little bit, uh, continuing uh, our conversation uh, about, uh, uh, well, actually, we, we started talking about Facebook, and so I kind of got sidetracked here. But Gary shared with me that a lot of people have been booted off of Facebook uh, over the last, I, I'm assuming, a uh, couple of days. Uh, I just sent Bonnie a message to find out if we did or not. But uh, w this is, and I had to run down to grab my phone so I can message my sister, to see if we got kicked off there. But when I came back on, you said they kicked you off. Uh, I mean, this they kicked you off for putting mutated babies up on uh, uh, from uh, Fallujah, right? Right. Crazy. Right. They said I was distributing child porn, so my account was suspended for a week. Just a week? That, yeah. That's uh, good grief. Good grief. All right, let's talk. Let's keep going on with uh, uh, you were talking about uh, Navy sailors that were uh, suing Japan. Yeah, this, this doesn't have anything to do with depleted uranium. This has to do with the USS Ronald Reagan that was um, in the vicinity of Japan when, um, when the earthquake and tsunami happened. And they offered assistance, and they, um, they were parked offshore from the Fukushima plant when the reactors exploded. So they were heavily contaminated with a plume from the MOX reactor, which is mm. just horrible. Um, that that happened to them. But there's been a couple of videos lately that have been put out. One was, um, well, there was one that, that happened uh, when the event happened, and I remember watching it on CNN, and I was just completely horrified because I knew that the ship had gone through this plume, and they had all these sailors that were out with um, brooms and, and mops, and mm -hmm. they were swabbing the deck with dish soap, and they weren't wearing any kind of hazmat gear or gloves or masks or anything. And here we are a year and a half later, and there's now eight of these sailors that are experiencing great physical pain. Um, they've started a lawsuit against Japan. They're having bone marrow transplants 
to fix some of their problems. One sailor has developed cancer. Another has um, severe degenerative discs in their back. Um, they, they all have thyroid problems. One of the sailors had a, a baby born with birth defects. Um, another one is, is bleeding from their rectum. And these, these things all happened to them after the Fukushima incident. And um, there was a, <clears throat> a video that was posted from one of the sailors on this ship of the decontamination facility. Because after you're exposed, whether it's a nuclear, you know, a terrorist attack or an exploded reactor or, you know, a bomb, um, any kind of biological attack, there's a decontamination procedure that's supposed to be followed. Right. And I actually found the PDF of that on online from the U.S. military where it clearly indicates how the room is supposed to be laid out. <clears throat> and I put out a video on this um, a couple of days ago. But you're supposed to, you know, sequester everything. Everything is draped and, and taped. So it's like these closed rooms where this, the sailors would go into. They should have stripped their clothing off right away, had um, high-pressure showers, decontamination, then been checked with Geiger counters, and then triaged and sent to an appropriate facility if they were having any kind of symptoms. Well, what this video showed that the sailors took was basically just this free-for-all going on in this room in the ship where <clears throat> Geiger counters are alarming all over the place. The guys are walking around. Everybody's wearing shoes, spreading contamination all over the place. Nobody's wearing masks. There's not a single hazmat container or bag or anything in this room. In fact, all of their contaminated vests and stuff mm -hmm. are in big piles on the floor. And they're just walking around in here and they're kind of like, you know, the, the guys that are filming are laughing because they don't know how to react. They're like, wow, I guess we're dead. Or, you know, I mean, they're joking around about this because they knew it was bad, but they had no idea how bad. But they didn't, they didn't um, follow any kind of protocol for decontamination. Mm. So, I mean, you know, it's not just Japan here that's, that's at fault for this. Um, was, there any, was there any explanation on why? I mean, they just didn't, I mean, I, I was in the military. I remember doing drills when you prepare for nuclear biological uh, type attack. You, you had to go to a certain level of mission-oriented posture or MOP uh, is what it was called when I was in. And, and if it was exposure of one level, then you went to MOP level one through MOP level four. But uh, I, I guess in the training that when I was in, we never trained for a nuclear reactor uh, necessarily that, uh, that imploded. It was more of a, you know, of a weapon type scenario, but it's hard to believe that they would be, you know, in that region when these uh, when these reactors failed and then just had the guys up on deck swabbing the deck in their whatever, in their regular uh, work uniform, uh, especially if you had all this equipment, all these Geiger counters going off or these detectors of one sort or another, uh, alluding to the fact that you know, there was radiation present. That's unbelievable. Right. They had fairly sophisticated Geiger counters, too, not scintillators, not the ones that would have broken it down by isotope. But the Japanese government did know. In fact, um, any news published a story today that they issued an alert to all of the um, politicians and officials that lived in northern Japan <clears throat> that the reactors were going to explode and that they needed to evacuate 100 kilometers or more away from the site. But that ship was closer than that, and they didn't get a warning or it was ignored. I mean, later they did pull the ship away. Um, it stayed off the, the coast of Japan for um, a period of time. I really don't know how long, but these sailors started having symptoms within a few months, and they were very hesitant to bring up this lawsuit, um, understandably, you know, because it would, you know, probably characterize the, the Navy as, as playing this down and, you know, cast a lot of suspicion on our government, too. But which, uh, Japan which already knew how bad. Japan knew how bad it was, and they played it down. And our well, government, we know from, from phone calls, you know, from the Freedom of Information Act phone calls with the NRC, they knew how bad it was. Right. And, and you, the, one of the times you were on the program previously, you talked about how Clinton, Hillary Clinton went over there uh, to make sure that the, uh, the commerce between the U.S. and Japan flowed uh, without any, uh, anything impeding it, such as checking uh, material coming in from Japan. Right. And now we, we check, um, they check outgoing exports, I think one out of every 10 items 
is scanned for radioactivity and we've gone off and on with the beef imports were stopped and then they started again and you know there's just no clear testing being done on anything you know seafood or meat or anything coming from Japan or anything coming out really out of the Pacific Ocean and when we do get results it's from tests that were done six months ago or 12 months ago like the the radioactive tuna fish that Stanford had reported on it took them six months yeah to tell the public a full year after that. the event what what and that's what's just the, not acceptable what did what do activists like you run into when you question these agencies on on why, why is it taking a, a year after the incident to get these kind of reports on tuna and then you find out that they're six months old uh to boot mm-hmm. i mean what, what are they saying is you know we're doing the best we can i mean what are the answers that are you know these are supposedly working for the people what are, are you just getting stonewalled when you talk to these people Getting stonewalled, um, I've, I've tried for <clears throat> weeks now to get a hold of somebody at uh, NOAA to find out whatever happened to the, the radioactive uh, seal tests. You know, they found all, you know, there were like 100 seals that they found, ringed seals. Um, this was back last summer that were losing hair and they had lesions and um, when they performed autopsies on these dead seals they had brain tumors and all kinds of tumors in their body and they said that those seals did have radiation but not above what they would expect to find in the ocean but they hadn't tested for anything from Fukushima yet and we've never gotten the results of that we were supposed to have gotten them in February of 2012 and so I called Noah and the guy who's in charge of the study his name is David Kelly Hold on and a second. And the first, sure. Hold, hold on. We'll do, we'll we'll talk, we'll bring up date. Uh, what'd you say, David Kelly? Yeah. We'll talk about David Kelly and Noah and uh, Fukushima, and finish uh, finish up the first hour with Christina Consolo when we come back after a few commercials. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath, along with uh, Gary Hendershot. We were he was uh, taking part in the conversation during the break, and Christina Consolo, the rad chick. Uh, you know, I, I, this is our final segment with you, Christina. And I, you know, we're talking about the effects of uh, radiation, and and you, would, you had said during the break that you know it's cumulative effect, and more and more and more evidence keeps coming out that uh, that yes, it's in our food, it's in our water, it's in our air, and it's also just like the Gulf, uh, became a non-story at least in the mainstream. What are the, I mean, what are the current conditions uh, of Fukushima? I mean, what what state you mentioned? Uh, Chernobyl was uh, losing its containment uh, dome. Uh, what, what's the status on these uh, reactors that have all failed? Well, their their <laughs> their status is basically the same. We don't know where the corium is, which is really concerning. That like nobody talks about this except once in a while. Michio Kaku will come out and say, "Oh, it's liquefied uranium. It's never been seen in the history." Of nuclear energy that's what's going on in reactor two but then there's like well what do you do about it what is it going to do how long is it going to be in that state how long is it going to be releasing radioactivity um you know there we need like really smart people all working on this problem and trying to figure out is there a way to contain it because there were ideas that were thrown out at the beginning and Japan didn't have the money. They didn't want to dig under the reactors like Chernobyl. They didn't want to, you know, build a sarcophagus or anything like that. It was too expensive. Um, you know, they've had trouble even keeping workers there. And, um, you know, because it sits right on the sea, everything that's dumped on those blobs in the ground and on the spent fuel pools, like everything leaks down and, and goes into the ocean. Is that still and we're there? starting to see dead coral around Hawaii and, and turtles with lesions and fish with lesions. And then, you know, the, the fish that have already measured radioactivity. And we had radioactive whales just the fir- first few weeks into Fukushima. There were six whales that were caught around Japan, China, and Russia that were highly radioactive because they feed on plankton. So they were taking in huge amounts of plankton, which had soaked up these, you know, um, isotopes. Um, so it kind of skips in the food chain if you think of it like going from a small animal to a big animal because here's a big animal that feeds on something small. Right. So I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a, just a long term problem. No solutions, well, it's, no it's, technology to deal with it. And um, that, that, that's the question I had too. Is, is the solution or is the, uh, the treatment of these still dumping seawater onto them? I mean, is this 
they for for over a year and a half they've just been dumping more and more seawater on them. Well, they have to, or the the fission will restart, and it'll be even more radioactivity leaking out of there. Or they could have another explosion because of like hydrogen buildup and things like that. I mean, so it's such a complex process. What they probably should have done is just sprayed cement over the entire complex right at the beginning of this, and well, sprayed so everything, the trees, everything where the stuff had landed. But instead, it just keeps blowing around and getting, you know, released into the atmosphere and, and then blowing over here and raining out over North America. I mean, that's really the, the only thing I can think of. And, and the other thing that was suggested was digging a huge moat and expanding that moat into the ocean and filling it with boron and concrete so it would leak into that and be absorbed by it instead of just running into the ocean unabated, which is Unreal. what it's been doing for almost two years now. It is, so there's no... There's no uh, firm plan going forward to contain uh, to contain these meltdowns. They're they're just going to keep dumping water on them and ignoring them. I mean, there's got to be some kind of you know in Fukushima they built these massive containment domes. Don't they have a plan uh, in place uh, over in uh, Japan to do something similar? Well, they, they put a tent over reactor one, and that was to <laughs> keep in, like, gases. Uh, Miss Milky the Clown on YouTube calls it the circus tent. Yeah, tent. That's Because you can't really great. see what's going on inside. And um, they're building, like, a 100-foot-long wall underneath reactor one to try to keep some of that to, from going in the ocean. But I don't even know how workers can go down there with how radioactive it is. Um, you know, they, they've tried sending in robots and they've tried doing all these things and everything keeps breaking because it just fries the circuitry. Yeah. Yeah, it's an ongoing problem that's, you know, it, it, like you said, this could be centuries. Uh, and, and you you know, you talk about whales feeding right on uh, plankton. Well, pl everything in the ocean is, uh, you know, the base of food chain is plankton. And so everything eventually ends up, uh, you know, be it fish that are eaten by sharks that are so forth and so on. Uh, are, are exposed. What what about the spike levels uh, here in the country? You you, you do a great job of, of monitoring uh, all over the country to to uh, alert people when there's uh, high radiation levels in their area. Are we still seeing you know uh, certain times where uh, we get spikes in certain areas around the country? Right now, the biggest spikes that we've had in the last few days, and we've had a number of them around 200 counts per minute, which is double alert level, is in Hawaii. And um, I don't know what to attribute that to. It, it's been going on for a few days. The, the Geigers there keep alarming. And um, there's a great new website on, on Facebook called radwatch.info. Radwatch.info on and Facebook. They, they post graphs from all over the country. And I know a few people who are trying to work with um, web designers on putting together a, a better map of um, people with Geigers that are doing individual measurements. And eventually we need to like come up with a plan to like certify these people too so everyone trusts their results. I mean, I know that they know what they're doing, but mm -hmm. not everyone will take them serious, you know, especially mm -hmm. people who work in the industry. And it's being kept from them too. I've had a couple of nuke industry workers that have contacted me recently and said, I had no idea how dangerous my job was. No one's ever told me any of this. I didn't know radiation could do any of this to people, that it affected your immune system and that it could cause eye problems and heart disease. And, you know, and it explains why all my coworkers have cancer. And mm -hmm. this was an email that I got from a crane operator who works with spent fuel pools. And, um, you know, I've heard from a, a physicist friend of mine, too, that when he worked in the industry, he wanted to take classes on the, the health effects of radiation. And they said, you don't need it for your job. We're not going to send you to that. We're not going to pay for it. And um, he worked with a spent fuel. And he worked on de decommissioning the Fermi-1 reactor that melted down in Detroit in the 60s. Hmm. And they told him he didn't need to know that. Unreal. And, and, and just so, uh, I mean, just as another slap in the face, uh, I started off the program saying I'm going to get a video out about this fiscal cliff, but it's ironic that one of the companies that managed to uh, secure a bunch of tax breaks uh, is, of course, General Electric, the creator of so many of these lovely uh, devices that are uh, that are failing and then uh, covered up. Uh -huh. All right, what do you see coming? Uh, uh, what's your biggest concerns now going into 2013 since we're starting the year off? Is it still, uh, you know, Fukushima? Last time you were on, you were... We were looking at uh, all uh, a bunch of different reactors in the United States. 
uh, that were p potentially problems. What are you what are you uh, spending your time researching and studying now besides Fukushima? Well, we've been, we've been watching a lot of the um, earthquake activity that's been going on, and right. you know some of it's reported, some of it isn't. And just in the last few days, we've had like hundreds of earthquakes in the Bayou Corn area where the sinkhole is, which is double the size that it was the last time I was on your show, by the way. It's now nine acres in size. And wow. there have been earthquakes there like crazy because the salt dome is collapsing underneath there. Um, so there's some nuke plants in that area just north of Baton Rouge. That plant has been leaking underground from its pipes. Um, so any of these plants that are in any earthquake prone areas, which is now, you know, basically the whole country, from how, yeah. how many earthquakes that we've had <laughs> lately, having them in all these weird places, um, you have to wor you know, start worrying about the equipment failing and the emergency systems not working properly and the, the stuff going into our drinking water from these plants, from the, the pipes leaking underground. Hmm. Yeah, and it has been weird, the, the amount of earthquakes that we've seen uh, you know, on the East Coast. Uh, there's a lot of people who are, are concerned about the New Madrid fault line uh have you heard any talk on that i mean th that's uh you know we we talked about that in the past as well as a potential there, yeah there there's been some some strange things showing up on the seismographs um recently there's been a lot of like vibrations being detected it doesn't look like an earthquake but rather than the lines being straight you can see that there's definitely kind of a, a squiggly line that will go on for a duration of a couple hours and then it'll stop and that's not fracking um, it's something else, and it's also being picked up on these arrays that they use for underground nuke testing. The, the um, Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty has these all over the world. There's these arrays that are actually spread out underground for several miles where they can pick up very, very sensitive vibrations in the earth so we can tell if anybody's doing nuke tests underground, even though the U.S. just did one a few weeks ago. Um, and those have been showing activity, and I've talked to a couple um, geologists about that, and they have no idea what's going on there. It's a very, very strange anomaly that's showing what up it, on the seismograms. What, what is there? Do they speculate on what it could be, potentially? I mean, or they just say, we have no clue? They're suspecting that it could be some kind of frequency, whether it's man-made or it's celestial. It's coming from outer space affecting wow. our planet and causing it to vibrate or it's something that's being generated by harp technology or tesla technology you know those would be the two top things and and um off the top of my head that could cause something like that but no we don't know the cause we, we don't know what's going on with that that i mean that's just that's scary stuff you know if you uh -huh. say the, the only thing that normally i mean maybe are there what give me this info on this test the u.s underground uh, nuclear test yeah, a few weeks ago they did a plutonium um, detonation. Oh, I don't remember now if it was in Nevada or Utah, but um, it w it was reported like three days after the fact that this test had been done, and they said it was a small amount of material, and they just wanted to see how it reacted. And um, Iran actually condemned the U.S. for doing this <laughs> test because we're all over them for their nuke stuff, and here we are blowing stuff up underground and not telling people. Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I completely I missed that. I didn't see that story anywhere. Yeah, I'll I'll find a link and send it to you. Yeah, I'm curious on that. I mean, so it, there's potentially if they, it's the same kind of vibration they're picking up that is with a nuclear test. I mean, is there a chance we're doing more of these nuke tests? Well, if it was a nuke test, it wouldn't be sustained over a period of oh, hours okay. or days like these vibrations are. So, I mean, it's all the, you can really do is just if you live in an earthquake-prone area, you know, just have your preparations and most of all, like, make sure everybody in your family knows what to do and that you know where the nuke plants are in case they melt down. You know, you have to have a plan of maybe evacuation for short-term or long-term based on the severity. I mean, that's the, the earthquakes don't usually kill people. It's the houses falling on them or the nuke plants that melt down afterward. So, yeah, you know, no people doubt. who live in areas where their construction isn't um, reinforced, like St. Louis, that's very close to the New Madrid, they have a lot of old brick and mortar, stone and mortar type houses. They don't have like earthquake, um, you know, stuff built into them. Yeah. So they're, they're at high risk for a lot of destruction if that would happen. 
Well, I appreciate you coming on here and giving us information. And I'm looking at the clock, and we are out of time uh, for this first hour. I didn't hear the music, though. I don't think Gary heard it. I don't think uh, it was sent to him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Christina Consolo. All right, let me give you a time. Uh, UCY TV Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. East, ucytv.com. That's where you can uh, check out her program. Christina, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're, you're very welcome. Guys, hang tight. We're going to take this break, and we'll be back with uh, Dinah Everett Snyder and more Wide Awake News Ready. We'll see you in a few.